You are about to listen to a message from Root River Community Church. If you live in the Rushford, Minnesota area and do not have a church home, we would love to have you at one of our Sunday morning services. For more information about our church, visit our website at rootriver.org. We hope and pray that God speaks to you through this message. Welcome, everybody. If this is your first time, as Josh already said, welcome. We're so glad that you're with us. My name is Pastor Mike, and I want to invite everybody to turn in their Bibles to Joshua chapter 10. That's the kind of the first part of your Bible. You're going to find the book of Joshua, so the Old Testament book of the Bible, Joshua chapter 10. And I uh, want to invite everybody to the celebration meeting after the service at 1045. It's for everybody, and it's kind of our business meeting, but we try not to have anything boring here, so we call it our celebration meeting, and we'll have lots of fun. Come out and be a part of that. This is a vision message, and we did this last year. I, I, I wish that every church would do this, because I feel like the Lord oftentimes lays different things on kind of the leadership of the church's heart. And lots of times, leaders just kind of keep those things to themselves, uh, not, not really knowing what to do with it. I think it's good just to share it with everybody, because together we are the church body, and I believe that we can kind of unite our faith together and believe God to do some amazing things in 2019. So this is kind of one part, state of the church address, second part, vision, message, just kind of asking God, God, what do you want us to be doing in 2019? What are some of your goals in 2019, God, that we can kind of unite our faith together? I want to say that you need a vision for your life. Even before we get to uh, the church's vision for 2019, uh, if, if you're sitting here today breathing air, you need a vision for your life. Uh, if, if all you think your life is about is making a paycheck or earning a retirement, you need a bigger vision than that. You need a God-sized vision for your life and say, God, what are you calling me to do? Uh, what is your plan for my life? Even more than where I work, who are you calling me to minister to? Who are you calling me to reach out to? Uh, God, I'm just looking out at each and every one of you guys. God has a plan for your life. And it's to be a kingdom kind of person where you're more about the kingdom of God than you are about the kingdom of me or the kingdom of I, uh, building up your own wealth. You're about investing into the kingdom of God. And that might look in different ways. It might come out in different ways. But you need that kind of vision for your life. And let me tell you why. The Bible says in Proverbs 29, let me throw this verse up there. Verse 18, it says, where there is no, say that word with me, where there is no vision, the people, the people perish. They kind of lose sight of which way they're trying to go. They don't totally know what they're supposed to live up to. They don't totally know why their life is even important. And I think churches can kind of get into this mindset where they lose the vision. They lose, why do we even come together on a Sunday morning? And when churches start to do that, I think churches start to perish. They turn into, no, I don't know, they turn into parishes. We don't want to be a parish. We want to be a church. We want to be a movement of God. God is doing something in our midst. Uh, we want to be a church that is not perishing. And, and I got to tell you what, um, even with your own children, build within them this vision for their life. Dwayne Agramson, my father-in-law, he always taught us kids to, to build a vision within our own children, to say, hey, hey, I don't even care what you do occupationally. I care that you are a kingdom person, uh, and you will be a kingdom person. I, I pray this often, like almost every night over my kids. I, I, I kind of say the same thing. I, I say, I believe that at early ages, they will accept the Lord, and they will love the Lord with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. They will be filled with a double portion of the Spirit. They will be able to meet and marry their godly set-apart spouse at an early age. Together, they will have just godliness in their home. They will do great things for the kingdom of God. They will... 
they will have their own godly children. You see what I mean? Like, I'm building within my children a vision. Because if you're a ship at sea, and if you don't have a direction, if you don't have a course that you're on, you're just going to float around in the sea and be lost at sea. And kids do that when they have no vision over them. Uh, people, adults do that when they have no vision, vision over them. And churches do that when they have no vision over them. I think churches, so often, they start arguing about, oh, I didn't like that song, or I didn't like this song, or the, the worship's too loud, or the worship's too long, or this or that, or I can't believe the color of the carpet is this color. And it's because they stop losing focus of the vision. You, you, it, we can't be like that. We, we got to continue to be focused and, and say, God, you are calling us to do something great here in our city. We want to be on mission and on vision with you. Turn to your neighbor, the, the person sitting right next to you this morning, and say, you got to get a vision. You got to get a vision. And so we have, uh, after we read Joshua chapter 10, uh, I'm going to set forth just kind of some goals for 2019. And, and these aren't just numbers that we've kind of made up. These are, some, these are some numbers that we've prayed about, that we've really sought the Lord about, me, Jimmy, Krista, the governing board team. And, and, and we, we just feel like God is at work, and these are some of the goals that we're going to set forth. And, and I got to tell you, churches need vision like this because not only will churches turn into parishes and perish, but churches, uh, they got to keep in mind that people will perish, that, that this is more than just us doing church. But we believe at Root River Community Church in the reality of heaven and the reality of hell. I was studying hell a little bit this past week. I, I mean, Jesus spoke more on hell than he did on heaven. He, he warned people that this was not just a, a, a temporary place of punishment, but this would be an eternal fire that never goes out. The Bible says it's going to be a place of weeping. And I mean, don't, church, let's not glaze over these words. Weeping and gnashing of teeth. And, and think of your friends, your coworkers, your neighbors, some of your family, people who have not fully surrendered their life to Christ. They might be religious, they might be nice, but they've never really totally by faith entrusted Jesus Christ. They will go to hell if, if they never surrender their life to Christ. And so churches and Christians, they have to have a vision for their life. They have to say, we are about eternal things. We are about saving souls. We are, we are about seeking and saving that which is lost because so many people are perishing. Uh, I got to tell you, some of the goals that we set, they're big goals. In fact, I'm a little bit nervous to share them from the pulpit, uh, but if you just be a little bit gracious and if you muster up just a mustard seed of faith with me, I believe that God can do some amazing things in 2019. Amen? Come on, somebody. Amen? Amen. Amen. Joshua chapter 10, verse 12, pretty amazing story. Everybody knows Joshua for fighting the battle of what? And it's because of that song, Joshua fought the battle of Jericho. But I think this story trumps the, the battle of Jericho. This story to me is one of the most amazing stories throughout the whole Bible. And Joshua and his men, they're fighting this battle and they're actually winning it, but the sun is about to go down. It says this, this is like kind of like a summary of what happened. Verse 12, it says, on the day the Lord gave the Israelites victory over the Amorites, Joshua prayed to the Lord in front of, say that next word with me, in front of all the people of Israel. Imagine praying this in front of anybody and almost how embarrassing this kind of prayer is. I mean, this prayer takes guts. He said this. He said, let the sun stand still over Gibeon and the moon over the valley of Ajlan. I don't know how you say that. I just kind of made it up. He's praying this prayer because he's realizing that they're winning the battle with the Lord's help. But if the sun starts to go down and darkness covers the land, the enemy is going to slip out and escape, and the Amorites would still be out there. And so Joshua's like, 
what are we going to do? I'm sure people were coming to him, what are we going to do, Joshua? What are we going to do, Joshua? What are we going to do? And he's thinking to himself, I don't know. I, I guess we could pray for this or pray for that. And then just something, I, I just, I wish I could be there and be inside Joshua's mind because you got to realize Joshua was actually one of the Israelites who left Egypt. And so he actually walked through the Red Sea when God parted the Red Sea. Joshua has seen amazing miracles. He followed Moses for a long time. He saw water come out of the rock. He saw all the plagues of Egypt. And so when he gets to this moment in life and the Amorites could escape if the sun continues to go down, it just dawns on Joshua that God is the almighty God. That God is the creator of the heavens and the earth. He made the sun. And if God can make the sun, God can make the sun stand still. And so something inside Joshua just prays this prayer in front of all these people, a prayer that you and I would probably never even whisper to our spouse. He prays it with this gusto and belief. And he says, let the sun stand still. God, don't let it go down. And somehow God honored his prayer. In verse 13, it says, So the sun stood still, and the moon stayed in place until the nation of Israel had defeated its enemies. What an amazing story. Isn't that an amazing story? Man, that blows the battle of Jericho out of the water. I don't care what you think. I don't care how popular that song is. I'm going to write a new song. My kids, uh, oftentimes when we're by lakes or something like that, they, they love throwing rocks into the water. What kid doesn't, you know? And occasionally my two-year-old would throw one in the back of my three-year-old's head, but we still do it anyways. And one time, I remember, we were in my hometown. There's like a 30-foot waterfall in my hometown, Osceola, Wisconsin. Everybody ever been to Osceola, Wisconsin? A couple of you. You, get, you other people, you got to get out more. But there's this big waterfall, and we're throwing rocks, and I keep grabbing bigger and bigger rocks because it's just fun to see the kid's face light up when there's the big splash. So I'm grabbing big rocks, you know in there and and you know they're like like it's nothing for me and I keep grabbing bigger and bigger and bigger ones and and my kids start pointing like dad grab that one dad, get, dad grab that one and I keep picking up big rocks and pulling my back out and and finally one of them says dad throw that rock in there like the size of the screen kind of rock and and I was like who do they think I am like what are we, I'm not the Hulk or anything. You put me on the spot in front of your mom, like, like <laughs> embarrassing me. But then the other side of me, I was like, they think I'm somebody. Like, they, they have this faith of a child that thinks their dad can do anything. And I was like, I like that. I like that kind of faith. And this story in Joshua chapter 10, it's one of those stories where I think God was so honored that somebody would finally believe that God can do anything. Amen? Amen. And let me tell you what, I don't know what problems you came here with. I, I, I'm sure a group this size, there are marriages falling apart. There are children that are, are going crazy. You don't know what to do with. Uh, but let me tell you, whatever your problems you might be facing today, they're not as big as the sun. I did some research on Google. The sun's really big. It's really big. And, and whatever it is, it's not as big as the sun. And I believe that it's a sun stand still kind of a year for Root River Community Church. That, that personally, come on somebody, that in your personal lives, in your marriages, your finances, your business, your children, your grandchildren, it's a sun stand still kind of a year. You need to pray that kind of way. You need to pray those kind of prayers. God, would you do it? Would you do it, God? Would you make the sun stand still? I, I, I'm telling you what, if you don't have those kind of prayers from time to time, you're not praying the right way, I really believe. You, you've got to believe God from time to time for the impossible things. It, it 
builds something within you. It blesses God because God can say, like, finally, like, someone gets it. Someone gets that I didn't just create the universe, but I command the universe. Somebody doesn't just believe that I created their body, but that I can heal their body. Somebody doesn't just believe that I, I created all these things, but I ordain all. I can change things. I can blow your mind. I can make the sun stand still. I, I just believe as a church body, we got to keep praying that way. Let me tell you, throughout this year, we've seen physical healings happen. Even last Sunday, somebody got healed of like this long time pain that they've been feeling. People have been healed of cancer through this church throughout 2018, and we will not stop praying that way. No matter even what we see, don't, me don't, don't let your sight mess with your faith. You got to believe even when your even when your eyes are telling you a different story. You got to say God is the God of the impossible. Amen. Amen. He can do it. Even after the service, if, you, if you're struggling with something, uh, whether it is a relational thing or whether it's a physical thing in your body, come down front for prayer, prayer. The people down here, they're friendly. They will love on you. They'll bless you. They'd love to pray with you. And we need to keep believing that God will do it. Amen. God will do it. He will make a way. He will make a way. In the life of this church, I believe it's a sun stand still kind of the year. Last year, our vision was it's a six arrow year, and you can go online and listen to that message. Uh, but just even it's similar to this, believing God for more. But this is even like believing God for impossible things. Uh, last year, uh, one of the things was we wanted, we just felt like God was saying, pay off the loan, pay off the loan. And it, it was like a nearly impossible thing. Uh, but this year, I, I mean, th this is crazy. What should have taken like, like 17, 18, 19 years, we did it in three through the grace of God. And we paid off the building last year. Amen? Come on, somebody. Uh, last year, this is amazing, last year we gave away $37,000 to different ministries, different missionaries, uh, different things outside of this church. His little feet came in here, we sent them away with over $3,000. I mean, all these things add up, and it's just great like that a church like this can, can be giving. And you got to know that every dollar that comes in, 10% of it, at least 10% of it, goes out and it blesses different ministries around the world. And you can come to our celebration meeting and even hear more about those things. But, but I just believe, like, we don't have a number for 2019, but we just believe, like, God, would you do more? Would you allow us to give away more? Would you allow us to bless more people all over the world uh, through Root River Community Church? Would you help us give away more? Uh, last year, we saw several salvations, several baptisms. Uh, this year, we're going to put a number to baptisms, and, and, and this number number for, for some of you in the room, you're like, yeah, that's not that big of a deal. For me, it's a little scary to even say, okay? But I, I believe that God wants 50 people from this church to be water baptized. Come on, somebody. Hey, and if you've never been water baptized and you're nervous about it, people will clap. I guarantee it for you, just how they clap now. And, and water baptism, it's not salvation. I want to be very clear. We don't infant baptize or anything like that at River Community Church. We believe that the Bible sets forth a clear model of baptism where once you get saved, you surrender your life to Christ then you get baptized in water. And so if you've been here and you've gotten saved uh, as, as an adult or something like that, and you, you're like, I'm all in, I want to invite you, get baptized in 2019. Uh, uh, Past couple of years, we've made it a part of our Easter celebration on a Sunday morning during the service. This year, I just think some, some logistical things might change that, and we're going to probably do it after a couple different services throughout 2019. So even right now, you're, somebody's heart is probably beating in this room. Like, you know that you're supposed to get water baptized. I, I want to encourage you, write on the Connect card, I want to get water baptized, and drop it off at our Connect table located in the back. Uh, it, it's the year for for you. It's the year. This is a big number. I remember at, at the governing board meeting a few months ago, I started throwing out some numbers like, what do you guys think about, I know this would be crazy, but what about 20 people getting baptized? And Jeff O'Donnell's like, you better make that 50, Mike. And, and I was like, man, I wish you would have not said that because 50 is way harder 
But God can do it. Like, God can do it. That 50 number just started resonating with all of us, and we're like, God can do it. God can do it. Take that step of baptism. And do it. You got to do it. Uh, here, here's another thing, uh, talking about church growth. Uh, and this is really the last one. There's really only two, like 50 people being baptized and then some church growth here, numerically speaking. Uh, last year, actually, let me start. Two years ago, we grew by 30 five to 40 people. Um, consistent, we call those consistent, uh, consistent attenders, okay? Uh, last year, our vision message was that we were going to grow by, do you guys remember? 120, actually. I wanted to go just for 100, but then Jimmy said, Mike, I think we got to make it 120. And I'm like, Jimmy, why do you keep raising the bar and believe in God for great things? And, and so we said 120, and last year uh, we grew by 110 to 123 people, okay? And why there's that variation is because, to be honest, we didn't know how to count those 13 people because, like, because they're on the fence a little bit, they seem like. And I want to say, we love you. We love you. Don't worry about it. But we, want, we, we feel like God's calling you here. Okay. But anyways, isn't that amazing? Like, come on, somebody. 110 people. It's amazing. It's amazing. And, and this year, we just sense that God is going to double the size of Root River Community Church. Come on, somebody. Double the size of Root River Community Church. Uh, it, it, even that is like difficult to like say from the front. I just wonder what Joshua thought as he was praying that prayer. God, would you make the sun stand still? And you know, it, it, us here today, God, would you do this? Would you double the size of this church? And we don't know how, we don't know how to do different things and what that would mean or what that would look like, but would you do that? I was talking to a pastor friend of mine earlier this week on Monday and I was telling him a little bit of this message and some of these goals. And, and, and he said this after I just said that. He said, why, Mike? Why? Why do you think the church is going to grow uh, and double in size? And what he meant was, he meant this. He said, what are you going to do to make that happen? And he was, he was saying, like, what programs are you going to have? Like, what outreaches are you going to have? What what, like, different things are you going to do in your service? Or, like, what, what's going to make the difference? What, what are you going to do to make it so that all those people start coming? And immediately, I just felt like the Holy Spirit said, that's the wrong question. Totally the wrong question. I felt like the Holy Spirit said, Mike, it's going to happen because I love people. I, I felt like he said so strongly, like, Mike, there are people all around you who are going to hell. And, and church... I mean, seriously, lean into this. Like, there, there are tens of thousands of people all around us who will go to hell if, if some church doesn't have crazy vision messages like this and throw out these kind of crazy goals and, and just believe God for more and start praying and fasting this way. Uh, people will go to hell. I just felt like God said, I love people. God's saying, I, I came into the world, I died on the cross, all for people. He, he's like, I took their sin upon myself so that they can have a simple and sincere belief in me and their sins can be washed away. I think the Lord was just saying, I love people. And the Lord was saying, it will happen, not because of a program, not because of some new thing we might try or do. It, it, all those things help and they work, but don't put your faith in that. Put your faith in an all-loving, all-powerful God who loves people. Your neighbor, your coworker, your friend, your family member, he loves them. He loves them. And, and us as a church body, we got to love them too. We got to say, God, break our hearts for these people. Break our hearts for these people, these people that will perish if they do not surrender their life to Christ. We're not talking about being religious. We're not talking about being a good person. We're talking about people who say, it's not about me anymore. It's about God. God is number one in my life. He made a way when there was no way. He paid for my sin. God is number one in my life. The, the question of why is, can be the wrong question. It, it can be the wrong question. And so I want to make that very 
clear. Like these numbers, it's not just a, hey, wouldn't it be fun if, if we doubled in size? And hey, wouldn't it be fun if we grew and, and gave more money away? This is, this is a, there's an urgency here. There's an urgency that people need to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. People need to come into a church like this and, and with humble hearts open up their Bibles and say, God, this is my guide. This is the word. I surrender my will to your will. Like That's why we have these kind of vision messages, is to keep us aligned with the calling that's on this church. I want to I want to give you the mission statement here at River Community Church. It says this, we are a congregation committed. Everybody say the word committed. committed. We're committed to sharing the love of Jesus Christ. We're committed to it. We will, we, will un, we will always share the love of Jesus Christ. That's why we do what we do, is to teach people that you are dead in your sin, but because Jesus loves you so much, he died on the cross, and, and through a simple and sincere belief in him and a heart that's willing to repent and change, you can experience eternal life in heaven. We're committed to sharing those kinds of things. It's built within our DNA. It's in our mission statement. It's a part of us. And church body, we got to continue to, to unite our faith together and to believe God for great things. Amen? Amen. There's three things I just feel like we're supposed to kind of think about and, and apply to our lives throughout 2019. Some of them are repeats, but here we go. The first thing is I think we need to continue to fight and be engaged, okay? Now, the people in this story, in Joshua chapter 10, notice that they didn't just put their sunglasses on when the sun stayed out for a little bit longer. They didn't just stay out and try to watch the, the sun and get a suntan. Uh, they were in the mix of it all. They were engaged in the battle. They were ready to fight. And I, and I want to say, like, be engaged, church body. Like, continue to, to say, I am engaged in what God is trying to do through me, in me, and for his glory. I'm engaged. Like, like I serve on a ministry team. I've got my own people outside of this church that I'm ministering to. I, I'm, I'm in the mix of it all. I'm continuing to fight and be engaged. Uh, I want to encourage everybody, like, literally write down the names of people. That, that you just have this heart for, this burden for. Write them down. Put, tape the piece of paper in your Bible and pray for these people. I'm not just talking about like, God, would you please save these? I'm saying like, in Jesus' name, God, would you please intervene on the behalf of these people? I love these people, God. You love these people. Would you do it? And Satan, we speak against you. You are the God of this age who comes to blind the minds of unbelievers. You will not do it to this person, this person, and this person, Pastor Mike, told me to write their names in my Bible, and I did it. And I'm believing that God can make the sun stand still in their life too. I'm saying, like, be engaged in the fight. Be engaged. This last week of prayer and fasting, we we're a part of a 21-day prayer and fast. If this is your first Sunday here this morning. Uh, this last week of it, I do one whole day. If you haven't done a whole day of fasting yet, do one whole day and say, God, this is for you and these are for my friends. These are for my friends who will perish unless you intervene. God, would you do it? Like this is being engaged. This is just like the Christian life. Really, it's what it is. Being engaged in what God is trying to do. Uh, here's a couple other things. I, I just want to have church-wide, we all pull off together. Two years ago, we did an Easter egg hunt. It was a phenomenal event. We, it, the, the church was like packed outside. There was hundreds and hundreds of hundreds of people. Uh, the, the parking lot was filled with just people walking around. We had kitty train rides. We had petting zoos and face painting and fire trucks and a bunch of Easter eggs and tons of other stuff. It was, it was a great way to introduce people to Jesus. We shared like a quick 30-second salvation message. We invited people to church, and it was an amazing thing. I think we got to do that again. Uh, we got to do that again. And I want to encourage, like, when we do it, 
Be a part of it. Be a part of what God wants to do, and he wants to use you. Another similar event that I think we might try this year, there's some more planning that needs to happen, but similar to that, we want to try a pumpkin patch, okay? Uh, where in the fall, just imagine the parking lot's packed with people. We do the kitty trains, the petting zoos, all that kind of stuff again. And we give away like thousands of pumpkins uh, to little kids and families. And, it, and just a simple way to reach out to our community and, and be a part of that. And, and I guess what I'm asking is, if you can grow like 50 to 200 pumpkins in your backyard, please fill out a Connect card and say that you can do it because that's what we're going to need to make it happen. Uh, but seriously, say it, like that just resonated, I really believe, in some people's hearts. And you're like, I can grow 200 pumpkins or I could grow 30 pumpkins. or And yeah, I can bring them to the church. Like, like be a part of it. Be engaged. Continue to fight. Here's another thing. Uh, we say it all the time. Continue to have three good Christian friends. Joshua... Uh, I really believe one of the reasons that he had this kind of faith to pray that the sun could stand still is that one of his best friends had this kind of faith. His best friend was named Caleb. And Caleb and Joshua, if you're familiar with the Bible, they were sent out as spies with, with some other people uh, to spy out the enemy territory. And everybody else came back to Moses saying, there's no way we can do it. There's giants in the land. But, but Caleb and Joshua, they had this friendship and, and it united their faith together and it spurred them on to believe that God could make a way when it seemed like there was no way. And, and you need that kind of friend in your life. You really do. You need a Caleb kind of friend where, where he encourages your faith. Last week, we talked about this, the whole service, the importance of godly friendships, and we gave away $5 Jesse Street Java gift cards for the purpose of you to take and to take somebody from this church out for a cup of coffee to invest into a friendship. And if you didn't get your Jesse Street Java card, they're still at the Connect table. There's, there's many of them. Go on, take a Jesse Street Java gift card and grab, grab a friend and grab a cup of Java. Like we believe in it so strongly that we're willing to invest dollars into this. Like, and, and, and we say it all the time. Like, it's the number one statistical predictor of your spiritual growth. Uh, either, even get plugged into an event, a Bible study, the sweetheart dinner coming up in February. Go to these things so that your faith can grow with other believers. You need a Caleb kind of friend. Here's the last thing. Uh, we need to continue to be still before the Lord. Exodus 33 Verse 11, I'll have the words up on the screen here in a moment. Uh, but if you remember, Joshua uh, was kind of the up-and-coming leader after Moses. And so he followed Moses around for a long time. And there's this verse here, a couple verses that I want to point out. Uh, this, these like, this scripture right here, it changed my life several years ago when I kind of connected these dots together. It says this, inside... Inside the tent of meeting, the Lord would speak to Moses face to face. So this is many years before Joshua chapter 10. Would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. Afterward, Moses would return to the camp. Okay? Moses is like, guys, God, I got stuff to do. I got a busy schedule. I, I'm going to leave the tent of meeting. I'm going to go to camp. Okay? But catch this. But the young man who assisted him, Joshua, son of Nun, would remain behind in the tent of meeting. I mean, can you just picture it? Like, here's this young man, Joshua, just saying, Moses, like, if you don't got anything for me to do right now, can I just stay here for a little bit longer? Can I just be in God's presence? Can I just sit here for a little bit more? I just feel like I just got to be still before the Lord a little bit more. And, and it was kind of this, I was out of this relationship that I really believed it helped produce this faith that Joshua had to later pray this crazy prayer in Joshua chapter 10 that the sun would stand still. What do you guys think is harder? Do you think it's harder for God to make the sun stand still or to make his people stand still? It's so quiet in here. <laughs> Can I invite the worship team on up as we close here? Don't pay any attention to them. Just, just keep, 
keep focused here. But what do you think is harder, to make the sun stand still or to make his people stand still? I think it's to make his people stand still. What do you think is harder, for the Lord to double the size of this church or to make all of us just kind of have this relationship with God where we just want to linger a little bit longer and we just want to stay a little bit longer? Let me tell you what, if the church doubles in size but, but we haven't learned how to stand still before God and have this relationship with God, we've failed. We've failed. Because we can grow and, and we can answer the why. Why? Because we're going to buy a bounce house and because we're going to do this and set up a carnival and, and that's how we're going to get it to grow. No, 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 no. It's God. It's God. He is the worthy one. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And I just want to sit here a little bit longer. I just want to read my Bible a little bit more. I just want to have a little bit longer time in His Word. I just want to just want to listen to this worship music a little bit more. I just want to praise Him. I just want to cry out to Him. I just want to lift up His name. It's higher than any other name. It's the name that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. It's Jesus, the Lord. It, it, and I just want other people to experience that too. I want other people to experience the powerful name, the forgiving, saving name of Jesus Christ. And, and church, like, we need to develop that kind of mindset where we just are people who say we love the Word of God. Hey, church family, if you do not yet daily read your Bible, you've got to. You just got to. And I'm not trying to make some ritual or routine developed into your schedule. I'm just trying to say you got to be like Joshua and just say, I know I've got a lot of things to do, but I've got a big God. He can take care of them for me. I just want to spend some more time with them. And I encourage everybody, like, follow our New Testament Bible reading schedule. It's on our website. It's at our Connect table. Or get your own schedule to read the Bible. But every single day, open it up and say, God, speak to me. I want to be in your presence. I want to still my heart. I, I want to still my heart so that I, I might have the faith someday to say the sun can be stilled in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Church body, I just believe God is at work. Do you believe it with me? Am I the only one in this room? Come on, somebody. I just believe that God is at work. I believe it. I believe it. Hey, if you're here this morning and you've never surrendered your life to Christ, there's going to be people after the service down here, we'd love to talk to you further, but, but you don't even have to wait to talk to them. It's not about praying a prayer. It's not, it's not about doing a list of right things. I'm telling you, it's about totally surrendering your heart to Jesus Christ, to die to yourself. And, and I want to encourage you, even in this moment, count the cost. It will cost you something. God's saying, like, give up your whole life and follow me. It, but that's what we need. That's what we need. The Bible says that we've all sinned, that we've all fallen short of God's standards. Romans 6, 23 says that what we deserve for our sin is eternal hell. God is a just judge, and so he judges us fairly, and we've offended God. So we deserve to go to hell for all of eternity. But praise God, he sent his son to pay our fine. If you're standing in court, the judge can look at you and say, Pastor Mike's guilty, but somebody paid his fine. You can get out of here. And that's what Jesus did on the cross. And it's through a simple and sincere belief in that statement that will get you to heaven. And just Ephesians chapter 2 verse 3 says, it is not by works that you are saved. It's the free gift of God. You are saved by God's grace through a simple and sincere faith. And you can just surrender your life to Christ right now. I want to invite you to do it. And church family, let's just believe that God is at work here in this moment and that God is at work in this church and that he can make the sun stand still. I, I just want to pray a prayer over all of us if you'd allow me. Would you pray with me? God, we want to have great faith. We want to be people like Joshua who believe you for the impossible things. Lord, I speak over my friends who are here in the congregation. God, if there's any sickness, any disease, 
disease. Lord, we say, be gone in Jesus' name. Lord, would you heal them? Lord, would you cleanse their body from any sickness or anything like that? Lord, I pray for marriages represented that are on the brink of destruction, that have been struggling for decades. Lord, I pray that you would revive their hearts for one another, Lord that God, that they would remember their spouse, the spouse of their youth, God, and that they would say, God, I want to do it your way. I want to make this right. Lord, I pray for people in the room who have never shared their faith. Lord, I pray that you would give them a boldness by the Spirit of God to share their faith. Lord, I pray for people uh, throughout this congregation and throughout this city, God, who have never surrendered their life to Christ. Lord, I pray that in this moment, you would touch them by your Holy Spirit and they would do it. And God, we believe you for the impossible things, even for 50 baptisms throughout 2019, even to double the size of this church, God. And we believe that you will do it, God, and that you will do it because you love these people. So Lord, would you do it in our hearts? Would you make us still before you? Would you help us fight and continue to be engaged in the battle? We love you, Father. I want to just bless all these people standing in front of me, Lord. Would you pour out your spirit upon them? Lord, I pray for somebody here this morning who just needs a reminder that you are good, that you are gracious and kind and compassionate. You're slow to anger, but you're you're abounding and rich in love. Lord, I pray for that person who just has this hard heart. Lord, would you break it apart, God? Lord, would you touch them and, and make them just aware of your presence and your mercy? And might they surrender their life to you in Jesus' name. And as a church family, we all agreed and said together, amen. You just listened to a message from Root River Community Church. For more information about our church or how to make Jesus the Lord of your life, visit our website at rootriver.org.